Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. If you guys are following me on my other channel, you guys should know that I'm building a Mopar 361, which is the smallest big block Mopar ever produced, right next to the Mopar 350, but that was only for a couple years. So I'm not really counting it. The 361 was produced all the way from the late 50s to even the late 70s, as far as I know. I've heard rumors that it was even produced a little bit after that in industrial and machine equipment. So it's probably one of the longest running Mopar engines, but it's probably one of the least popular. Part of the build that I'm doing includes replacing pretty much everything except for the bare short block. So that includes heads, that includes exhaust, that includes intake manifold and carburetor. What it does not include is cam, lifters, pistons, etc. that belongs internal to the block. Once I get a baseline reading replacing all the old 1950s, 1960s stuff, then I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the cam and then we're going to go ahead and do some back-to-back -back dyno results. So what I've got here is stage one of upgrading the Mopar 361 by installing a set of later model 440 or 440 source heads. The designation on the stock Mopar heads are 924 for the 361 and 452 for the 440 heads, but I'm going to call them 361 head and 440 head just for the sake of simplicity. The original Mopar 361 was ve actually a very particular engine, mainly because it featured closed chamber heads. And what that essentially entails is that between the deck surface of the head and the combustion chamber, there is no lip. You can run your finger all the way across. There'll be no difference between the combustion chamber and the ceiling surface of the head. Everything is one flush unit. If we come over to the later model 440 heads, you'll see that although it looks fairly similar from a distance, you'll quickly notice that there is a ridge right here that prevents you from running all the way across. What that does is it actually lowers the effective compression ratio of an engine. You guys have to remember that in the late 60s, early 70s, we started to move away from leaded fuels and began running unleaded fuels. Because of that, standard compression ratios like 9.5, 10.5 to 1 on production engines were no longer possible, and they had to dumb down these engines until they figured out what to do, which is why in the early 70s, most big blocks struggled to make more than 250 horsepower because they lacked a ton of timing and a ton of compression, which really held these engines back. The combustion chamber for the Mopar 360 is around 80 cc's per cylinder, which puts it right in the ballpark of most performance aftermarket heads. If we go and take a look at the 440 head, we are actually looking at significantly more cc's, which actually lowers the compression ratio, like I mentioned earlier. I don't have an exact calculation, but it's probably well over 90 probably over 100 cc's in the combustion chamber. And if we take a look at the 440 source heads, I believe these measured in at like 85 or 87 cc's, which is actually a little bit higher than the 361 heads. But I feel like they decided to go with a larger combustion chamber so the heads can fit on a myriad of different engines without having to worry about over exceeding the compression ratios. If we take a look at the valves themselves, we are looking at a 208 intake valve and a 1.6 exhaust valve for the 361 heads. For the 440 heads, we are looking at a 208 intake valve, which is the same as the 361, but a 1.8 exhaust valve. And if we move over to the 440 source heads, we get the same 208 intake valve, but we get a 1.8 exhaust valve, just like the 440 heads. Looking over the rest of the deck surface, you're gonna see that the, both the 361 and the 440 have these big old holes right here where the intake manifold is supposed to go. I believe they did this to save weight because there's no other real purpose. And on the aluminum heads, it is one solid block because they are more worried about structural integrity than they are about weight loss because these heads weigh less than half as much as their cast iron counterparts which is a huge reason why most people swap over to aluminum heads in the first place moving on to the intake track the 361 heads and the 440 heads seem to have almost the exact same pattern and that goes for the 440 source heads the difference between these two that i've noticed is that the 440 heads have a much more refined port so if you just take your hand and you go ahead and feel in the porch right here on the 361 you should be able to feel where the push rod goes where the coolant jackets go where everything goes you should be able to feel it and if you go ahead and feel inside the 440 heads you feel the same bumps but they are much more reduced which allows for better airflow so in terms of the flow i can almost guarantee that the 440 heads flow better than the 361 heads the stock Mopar heads and the 440 heads both have the same intake opening, which is a 1.1 on the width and a 2.2 on the height. 
which would make sense because there's no different gaskets for the different heads they're all the same thing but i can imagine if you decided to make your own gasket and do a little bit of port work provided that the head actually had enough meat on it for you to be able to grind on it i'm sure you'd be able to bore these out a little bit to more of a d shape to get a little bit better entry into the valves the most significant difference between the mopar heads and the aftermarket head is that the aftermarket head does not have the provision for the EGR, AKA the exhaust passage on the head. It used to take the exhaust gas from the exhaust port and send it right back into the intake. What it would do is that it would heat up the intake to help with cold running engines. But the problem is that it would introduce way too much heat into the intake manifold and performance was severely reduced. Also, if you had problems with the EGR valve sticking open, you would have a significant drain on the power that the engine was producing, but also you would have a hard time having it idle. It would get worse MPG and worse wide open throttle performance, which is a huge reason why the aftermarket did not come with EGR ports. If you eliminate items and make things simpler, they tend to run a lot better, which I think was the idea when they decided to remove this. They still left the casting marks of where it should have been, but as for the port itself, it is no longer here. Moving on to the top of the head, that seems to be the area that has the most changes for all three of these heads. Starting off with the obvious, the 361 head only has four valve cover bolt holes, which means that the valve covers for these year engines are very particular. You will not get a good surface installing later model heads with the six bolt covers. As you guys can see in the 440 head right here on top, we've got one, two, three, four bolts. And then on the other side, we've got one, one, two bolts that puts us at six bolts if we look at the 440 source head we have the same one two three four bolts on top and two bolts on the bottom looking here from the top you can clearly see how the 361 intake track is almost identical to the 440 track the only difference between these two heads up on top is that the 440 head has a pedestal cast right into the head for the rocker shaft and the 361 head does not. The 361 head comes with a set of rockers that are very particular to the early 60s, late 50s big block Mopars. They quickly stopped using this design when they realized that they were having issues with bolts breaking once you start going into the bigger camshafts. The 440 source heads also have the pedestals built right into the head with the difference is that the pedestals on the 440 source head seems to be much beefier and can go around a wider area because the 440 source head uses countersunk bolts and requires special bolt holes with the 12 point head they were able to make the pedestals bigger and thus much stronger than they would have if they had the smaller pedestal cast in i don't know that the 440 has problems with the pedestals breaking i have not seen that or if i have seen that i haven't seen that too often but i do know that it's a common problem on the older style heads looking over the valve train themselves you can see that the 440 head has nice flat retainers versus this one that has more of a stamp steel style of retainer this is more of a manufacturing process thing again the installed height is right around two inches which is what i measured at the top of the retainer to the bottom of the machine surface where the valve spring sits one interesting note on the newer 440 heads is that they came with valve rotators on the back side this is a trend that continued far into the 80s and early 90s on the 360 and 318 magnum engines I don't know the exact purpose of what this was for. There's a couple different claims. Some say it was heat. Some say it was to prevent wear to, to the valve seat on the exhaust valve. But I don't know for sure what it actually accomplished. And I do know that when people swap to stiffer valve springs, they tend to eliminate the valve rotator in favor of some aftermarket retainers that make the springs equal length which is something the 440 source head took into consideration. Although they made the installed height almost exactly the same as the stock head, they installed wider springs, probably a little bit stiffer than OEM. They've also included a set of wider retainers along with it. Another thing that the 440 source heads has is a seat for the valve spring. The valve spring cup on the bottom allows the spring to function exactly how it should without damaging the very soft aluminum surface. Although you can probably install the springs without that little cup, eventually these valve springs will wear into the head and you're gonna have much bigger problems than that. I mentioned earlier that the intake track between the 361 head and the 440 head were almost exactly the same, but if we compare the intake track to the 440 head and put it right next to the 440 source head, you guys will be able to tell that the intake track is absolutely massive. I mentioned earlier that the bowl is much larger 
on the 440 source head than it is on the stock heads and a big contributor to that is the fact that the runners are significantly wider although the intake entry and the valve size are the same i can almost guarantee that the 440 source heads are going to tend to flow more cfm simply because they have the larger runners i don't know the actual design if it's based on anything contemporary or if it's just a copy of this and they just made it bigger i don't know if these wider intake ports will net you any kind of significant gains but i will be documenting that in later videos as part of the build series for the charger on my second channel which i will leave in the link down below if i will have to describe the 440 source heads to somebody i would probably just say they are a similar casting to the stock 440 heads but with minor upgrades whether all these upgrades offer a noticeable improvement, we are yet to know. I will make sure to find out for you guys in an episode. I will make sure to find out for you guys and let you know. So that's all for today. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.